Hello guys, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you're celebrating this time of year. Um, my name is Alex and today I kind of want to discuss the big elephant in the room between theater people and moviegoers alike. Cats. Oh boy. So um, this will be unscripted because I feel like I can discuss it a little better unscripted. Usually I would kind of write out a script or at least a guideline and have my brother edit this kind of stuff, but this is just going to be a quick review. It's um, kind of unrelated to Broadway in a nutshell. This is just kind of my thoughts on Cats the Musical just a little bit and the, um, the movie that just came out. So it's going to be unedited. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, I will go on the record first thing and say I do like Cats. I like the stage show and I've liked it for a while now and um, I'll kind of explain myself but what you should know about Cats is it did, for those that don't know, it did come out in the 80s so a little bit of a different time um, and it was um, written by Andrew Lloyd Webber who also did Phantom of the Opera um, which I adore Phantom of the Opera too. Um, so you know a little bit of a different time you know, theater was starting to push the envelope a little bit, um, back in the eighties, especially. Um, but even when it came out, it was very controversial. And what I mean by that is in the theater community, those that actually do theater and participate in it, it's a very, um, controversial show because you either like it or you hate it. Um, I've never really heard of anyone saying they just think Cats is meh. I, I really have heard a lot of I hate it and I've heard a lot of I love it. So um, to do a movie was a little bit odd to me, but um, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So I'll kind of explain why I like it. Um, it's an experience and that's the biggest word I can, I can use for cats is if you're looking for kind of a cohesive story and um, kind of a um, linear narrative, that's not Cats. That's not what Cats is meant to be. Um, the basic plot, um, if there's any plot to it, which there kind of is, but there kind of isn't. Um, basically, it's kind of like Cats Got Talent. So um, there's a tribe of cats called the Jellicle Cats who come together once a year to choose somebody to be reincarnated. And um, go to the heavy side layer, their version of heaven, to be reincarnated as a different cat. That's it. That's basically it. And then it's like cats got talent because each cat that has a song is kind of auditioning or, or kind of stating their case for it. So you got, you know, a song and then, you know, um, a cat introduces himself and then there's another song and, and you know, uh, that's that's the basics of it. Um, in between that, there is this evil cat called McCavity that's trying to ruin things, and he's kind of like this mysterious evil cat that's kind of thrown in there too. Um, but that's that's it. Um, I think some people don't like it because they go in thinking that it's supposed to be a narrative, like it's supposed to be a story story, like your Dear Evan Hansen's or Wicked or even Oklahoma things like that. It's not really that. Um, and you know, when you go to the theater, of course, you know, I, I can see why people think that for sure. But um, it's definitely supposed to be the spectacle. It's a huge dance show. It has probably one of the longest dance numbers I have ever experienced, but it's fun to me. Um, and the songs are just supposed to be kind of a showcase of talent and, um, the stage is really cool, um, I think. I think the set was really awesome and the costumes are amazing because you can kind of tell what they're going for but it still looks human enough where you connect with some of the characters. So I like that. Um, and I think if people really realize that that's what the show is, people would be a little more receptive to it. But I, I can definitely see why it's not some people's cup of tea. I'd say most people's cup of tea. Now, with all that being said, Cats the movie, honestly guys, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't because it was it was too bizarre. Like Cats is a bizarre show, it's supposed to be. Um, but the movie just, 
went too weird, I think. Um, so the movie did change a little bit from the stage show. Um, now, going to a movie and going to a um, actual live performance is of course different. Like I mentioned, me and my friend went to go see Cats and um, we sat in the aisle and the cats kind of interacted with the audience and it was more of kind of being immersed in their world. The movie um, kind of did that. Of course, it's not interactive, but um, it kind of tried to immerse you in the world and I think they did a good job with that. I definitely was entertained, so that's good. I mean, if you're gonna make a movie, even if it's bad, don't be boring. Nostalgia Critic, um, for anyone that doesn't know Nostalgia Critic, check him out, he's awesome, but as Nostalgia Critic always says, the biggest sin a movie can have is being boring. So at least it wasn't that. Um, but right off the bat, you just get this uneasy feeling looking at, at the cats, because of course everyone saw the trailer, most everyone saw the trailer and, were, and was very put off by it, me included. And again, I like cats, so I was like, huh, this, I mean, it looks kind of crap, but it may be good. I mean, it looks like it, it shows the heart of cats, what it is and, and all that. And of course, you know, the false hope with the Sonic trailer. I saw the Sonic trailer be revamped and Sonic looked way better. The movie looked way better. And I'm like, huh, well, there you go. It's probably just the trailer, everything wasn't complete. So that's why it looks like absolute garbage. And it'll probably look better once I go see it. Well, that wasn't the case, folks. That was not the case. It's so uncanny. Like, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to be like, oh, let's just have them in, in motion capture and then animate it. It's there's a stage show, there's costumes available. There's practical makeup and fur and stuff that you can do that looks amazing. The 98 movie did such a good job with the hair and makeup and atmosphere that that was the essence of the stage show. And, and this just looked bad. Like, like I couldn't get over I almost felt kind of queasy, and I, and I know that sounds a little bit dramatic, but I almost felt queasy looking at these things, because I'm like, I know they're human, my brain knows they're human, but my brain is also trying to process the fur, and, and how things don't really match up sometimes. Um, so that, that was a huge thing, and of course everyone's talking about the cockroaches and the mice in the I think second song. <laughs> um, and yeah, those were horrendous. It's 2019. They should not have looked like that. I'm just saying. Um, that was just terrible. I almost upchucked my popcorn. Um, but besides that, you know, it's, it, it's kind of awkward because they did try to shoehorn kind of a narrative into it. And again, Cats isn't really supposed to have a linear narrative. Um, basically, the bad cat McCavity is, is kidnapping people and, um, you know, behind the scenes. And then there's this new kitten that gets abandoned. Um, she's kind of who the audience sees first. And she kind of guides you through the journey. She's like, um, she takes the place of the audience. Basically, we're seeing it through her eyes, which I thought was actually a clever idea at first. I was like, oh, you know, this could actually work. You know, we're experiencing the Jellicle Ball and meeting all these characters through her eyes. That's pretty neat, you know, because, again, a lot of people are very confused by cats. So, um, so that was, that was an element I thought they could have worked a little better with, um, it's kind of just one thing after another happens and the, they try to have these transitions um, that flow into a plot, but it just, it ends up kind of jarbled. Like it ends up kind of discombobulating you a little bit. Cause it's like, oh, okay. So we're doing kidnapping now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Now we're back in a happy song. Okay. Um, so that, that, that's what I found a little off-putting, I think. Um, it's really hard to explain. Now, the acting is actually fine. 
I mean, the girl that played, um, the newcomer that played the main cat, the white cat, Victoria, she did a good job and she's just precious. All these facial expressions she's making, you could tell that she really dived into her character and, and made it about the awe and wonder. And, and that was really cute. Um, I did enjoy that. And she's a good dancer. She's a very good dancer. I'm glad she got a little bit of recognition that way. Um, but a lot of the actors, especially the ones that are kind of behind the scenes, act like they really don't want to be there. The dancing's kind of robotic in a way, and I don't know if that's the animation or the actual dancers, I don't know, but um, a lot of people don't look like they want to be there. Um, especially the guy that plays the main guy cat. Um, I know, don't judge me, I know the name of all the cats because I kind of grew up with it. His name is Monkey Strap. <laughs> um, he's the gray striped tabby that kind of is the de facto leader when the real leader isn't there, old Deuteronomy. Anyway, um, he looked too intense. Like you can tell he had to take it super seriously. Um, and that was kind of like when he first came on screen, it was like, I was like, ooh, I, I didn't like it at all. It was just creepy. <laughs> That's one of the first things you see. Um, and they did have Ian McKellen and Dame Judy, Dame Judy Dench. Gosh, I can't talk right now. Which I thought, you know, when I when I first saw them, I was like, okay, maybe. That's really awesome that they get that they got a um, female old Deuteronomy the leader. Um, usually. And traditionally, that's a male role. So I thought that was, okay, that could work. But she just acted like, Jane Duty, Judy Dench, gosh, I can't talk, I'm sorry. She just acted like she didn't want to be there. You could tell she was kind of, she thought it was ridiculous. And Ian McKellen did a great job with the emotion, and he did the best he could. But you can just tell, they were like, we are Shakespearean trained actors and we're in Cats. Come on now. Um, so that's kind of the feeling you got from them. Um, but the acting really was fine. Um, in fact, I think the acting saved the movie a lot. Um, so that part was fine. Um, Jennifer Hudson did a pretty good job at Grizabella, the, um, the one that sings Memories. Uh, memory is like one of the biggest musical theater pieces ever and she she did a good job but the whole time she was singing she was like actually crying and tearing up and stuff which I was like oh okay that's that's cool but then she was CGI'd as a cat and then she had snot on her nose and yeah uh, I was like this why didn't you just do practical effects really whole stage show costumes makeup use that um the other thing that kind of was a little strange to me is I did grow up with the 98 version, which um, they did change a couple of the songs to more Americanize them, so to speak. Um, and I think they use most of the original orchestration, which it has changed throughout the years. I don't know, but um, that's kind of like a personal thing though. Um, I personally didn't like the orchestrations because they were a little different to my ear. Um, that's just me, though. Um, the songs, for the most part, were pretty spot on. Um, some of them were a little off. For instance, Rebel Wilson. I'm not a huge fan of her anyway, but um, her song was just terrible. She did not sing it well. She did not act it well. It, it, was, it was making this joke about her being this, you know, f fat cat and, and, and everything she's in, she's like the fat comic relief where the only joke is that, oh, she's fat. It, that's not right to me. I don't, I don't enjoy that being the joke. So it was just painful. That particular song was very, very painful. Um, and also James Cordron's, Corden, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Um, James Corden's number was awful too because, again, 
haha ha, he's fat <laughs> but there was one joke in that song that kind of got a chuckle out of me <laughs> despite myself um he's on a teeter-totter and he's down here and a cat's supposed to jump on here and lift him up but the cat jumps and he doesn't go anywhere and he goes that's not gonna work is it I thought that was pretty funny despite myself um anyway um now I'm gonna kind of talk about what worked because surprisingly there was a couple things that did work in this movie one, the atmosphere was pretty damn cool. It was, um, it looked like they took the junkyard idea and kind of expanded on it, which I thought was really amazing. The colors were pretty awesome. Um, the lighting was spot on. Um, again, the dancing for the most part was pretty cool. It was more modern, but it, it worked. Um, and there were very occasional, very occasional spots where it looked a little more clean. Um, at the CGI, I mean, it looked a little more clean and, and smooth. And my brain stopped, like, having a crisis within itself. Um, and again, you know, the, like I said, the, the acting for the most part was really, really good. Um... It, it was a very pretty movie, surprisingly. Um, Cass isn't necessarily a pretty show. It's not really supposed to be pretty, like, um, I don't know, Moulin Rouge or something. Um, but it was, it was pretty. You could tell um, the cinematographers really did their homework and really tried to make it cats, um, which I appreciated. Um, and there was one song that absolutely you could not slap the grin off my face, as I always say. I probably, I've said that pretty much in every video. <laughs> anyway, I was grinning through the whole thing. Um, and that's Skimble Shanks, The Railway Cat. That was a fun number that really captured the spirit of that song and of that number and just expanded on it. And it was just incredible. The guy that played Skimble Shanks was one hell of a tap dancer and everyone, even the background dancers looked like they were just having a ball. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people did like that number I heard as I was going out in the theater. Um, so that part I was like, if the whole movie was like that, this might have actually been really good. It might have actually changed people's minds about cats. Well, maybe not, but maybe some. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was fun. Um, how they used scale was also kind of pretty cool. Um, the set was always to scale. Um, so if you had like a spray bottle, you know, the cats would be smaller than it. Or, or if you had like a, a shoe, it'd be about the size of, of it, <laughs> about the size as it would be to a cat. So that was kind of neat. Um, they do that in the show too. Um, the stage show, I mean. So that was pretty cool. Um, other than that, I think it's just a strange, strange movie. Like all the actors look strange, but occasionally the acting is pretty strange too. You got, um, like for instance, James, Jame. Dame Judy Dench. I'm so sorry I keep messing up her name. I can't speak. Um, at the end, she's kind of addressing the audience, which happens in the stage show. Okay, whatever. But then she kind of turns away and she's looking and then she turns back and it's, it's kind of like... Nostalgia Critic did say that it was like being held hostage and I definitely agree with that statement. It, it kind of feels like she, you know, you, you, you want to leave. Like, I really wanted to leave. <laughs> but she kept talking. Uh, um, and I didn't like what they added. They did add a shoehorned in kind of plot with McCavity kidnapping the contenders for the heavy side layer. So anyone that gets a song, he's kidnapping them. On a pirate ship. And making them walk the plank. It was so stupid. It was so stupid. Um, 
that's not in the stage show, by the way. Um, he kidnaps Old Deuteronomy, but Old Deuteronomy comes back in like four minutes. A song. That's all he does. All he gets. So, um, they took that idea and kind of added more, and it just did not work. Um, now, speaking of McCavity, Taylor Swift was a huge surprise in this movie because I was like, ah, oh, Taylor Swift, you know. Um, I'm indifferent to her. I, I liked some of her songs back when she was first starting to get big, but I haven't really listened to some of her new songs and, you know, I was like, they're just putting her in there because everyone knows Taylor Swift. Well, she actually did a really good job and she kind of looked good too. Um, you can really tell they spent time and energy on her design. Um, which is saying something. Um, she looked really good. She danced really good. The song McCavity was just on points. Like it was, it reminded me of the 98 version, which that one always has a special place in my heart. So I was like another song that actually would, you know, do well if the rest of the songs were like this, but she sang it well, she acted it well. And, um, her character, working for McCavity was kind of very interesting. So I was like, that works. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's good. But then McCavity actually sings his own song and it's like, that's not, no, he's supposed to be this mysterious creature. We don't even know if he's a real cat. He's just kind of this mysterious figure. Um, and he's supposed to be kind of shrouded in this mystery and to have him come and sing his own verse of his song in front of everyone is just not it's not what he's supposed to be about I mean I'm all for change but it just didn't make sense to me um yeah and and I kind of left feeling conflicted because it's not a horrible movie it's not it, it's it's strange um, and that's the best word I can use to describe it because it's not, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just kind of, you, you, you leave kind of wondering how you feel, which to be honest, I don't think any other movie has actually made me feel that way. Um, and I'm still, I'm still kind of processing it a few days later, which is almost a week later, in fact. Um, I'm still kind of processing it, which is, which is good and bad. You know, I, I'm, a good movie will make you think and kind of make you ponder the feelings and the emotions that it gave you, those kind of things. But this one, I'm pondering for the wrong reasons. I'm like, was it good? Was it bad? It just, it's very strange. And when inevitably, and it will, I almost guarantee it. When it comes on Netflix, I am definitely going to watch it again. And I'm going to kind of go into it with a fresher mind to kind of see what elements I can pick out that are actually good, good, and like really bad. Um, I think I did a pretty good job of kind of explaining what I thought worked and what didn't. Um, and of course, you know, um, they, a few days ago now, they did announce that they were going to clean it up and re-release it, which I think is very interesting because I'm like, how are you going to clean it up? Is it going to look, is it, can you even salvage some of that CG, CGI? I don't know, but, um, we shall see. I'm, I'm interested to gauge people's reaction when it's cleaned up and re-released um but that i think that's it for now um i'm going to do a proper um broadway in a nutshell episode of cats um me and my friend might collaborate on that because she saw it with me and she knew nothing about it going in and she absolutely loved it we had a blast um seeing that show together um, so I might get her to help me kind of get her thoughts too. Um, but I am working on Broadway in a nutshell, by the way, just, um, in closing. Um, my next one is going to be SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical. 
because it did premiere live on TV. They filmed the stage version and put it on Nickelodeon. Absolutely was ecstatic for that. So that's going to be my next one just because I just love it. Okay. Um, but after that, I'm going to get back on schedule with Come From Away. I think that was supposed to be my next one. Um, I can't remember, but I'll, I'll get back on schedule. Um, this new year, my goal is a video a week at least. Um, my, my brother is a pretty fantastic editor, so hopefully he can help me out. But um, thanks guys for joining me. Once again, happy holidays. I'm going to go spend time with my family and... Um, I hope you guys get to spend time with yours.